Monday, October 7th, 2024. And uh, the Republican fibbing machine is on overdrive. The View started today by talking about what FEMA is actually doing um, in uh, areas affected by Hurricane Helene. Um, FEMA is actually um, sort of the, the organization that makes sure they're like the project manager, right? They want to make sure that the funding gets where it needs to go, that the resources are getting where they need to go. Um, they're not actually like rebuilding a house. Um, they're just making sure that the support is there to um, to get the house rebuilt. Um, so, uh, but, you know, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and then that whole um, team of liars is saying the most ridiculous things about uh, the Biden administration is taking funding away from FEMA and giving it to migrants um, for their housing. Um, the whole demonization of migrants in general is so disgusting. But now to use something where this kind of um, natural disaster is you're using it, lying about it to get some sort of political favor is so gross. Um you know, a couple hundred people have died. This is the biggest thing, uh, hurricane since Katrina. Um, the destruction is awful. People are having a hard time getting information at all. So the fact that there's misinformation being spread by um, the presidential candidate is just fucking ridiculous. Um, and, and the fact that not only is it not true, but he's demonizing a thing that he did himself. Trump took money away from FEMA to try to build the wall um that he didn't build uh, so and i just don't understand how anybody like I, I i know that people just don't care anymore they just aren't paying attention to anything that he says just because they want to vote for him so badly because they let him he lets them be as hateful as they want to be but you know <laughs> um there was some staffer that said when the wildfires were raging in california he actually um, he had to be shown election voting data for the counties that would be getting support to help fight the fires to make sure that enough people voted for him in those counties. It, it's like that kind of retribution is just ridiculous. It's supposed to be you're the leader of the United States of America. I get it as a people. We're not very united. But this whole idea about states rights is bullshit. And if he were elected, he would want to defund FEMA. And 35 senators, Republican senators, actually voted to defund FEMA, which would mean there'd be no coordinated effort um, uh, to help these uh, hurricane victims. And uh, that's another thing that he wants to throw back to the states. So good luck, Florida. You're going bankrupt in a, within a decade. Um, I just don't get it. Why would you, like, are they telling people in Florida that? I don't know. It's it's mind boggling how much um, damage the man can do, how egregious he is with people's lives, and it, with playing with people's lives as as political pawns. And th there are still tens of millions of people who want him to be the leader of the country. It's mind boggling. Um. So. You know, at one point in the VP debate, J.D. Vance was saying that criticizing the Democratic platform about wanting to censor misinformation. And which to me seems like a pretty good idea. And I feel like if your team is the one that's um, uh, in support of misinformation and is against any kind of fact checking, it's because they peddle in lies. Like they just want to be able to lie to you as blatantly as they possibly can um, with no consequence. It's absurd. And I mean, if any of this were happening, I hate the both the 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 what about um, stuff, but if any of this stuff were happening from the Democrat side, the like it would just be the world would upend. <laughs> um, Fox News is gleefully reporting these lies about FEMA not getting, um, uh, not helping out in um, in Georgia and North Carolina and um, that the funding is being moved and this lie about the only thing that they're offering is $750 for people. That's an emergency, like here's the money to, to help you 
you know, bridge the gap for a hot second. I, it's it's disgusting. Um, and it's so like unreal that that people have to go on television and actually say, hey, no, that's not happening. That's not true. Here's what's actually happening. Um, this is just, it, it's, it, I, 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 he, I, I ugh, don't, I just, I'm tired of him. <laughs> I'm tired of the bullshit um, that he just keeps throwing out. And it just keeps getting wilder because they don't want to talk about the fact that they don't know how to do anything and they have no intention of governing. <sighs> Ugh. Anyway, um, big. Uh, it's a start of a big week, though. Uh, Harris is on sixty Minutes tonight, and um, that's the interview that Trump backed out of. He was invited. I want to know. I want to see how they're going to handle that. Um, I guess I'm going to have to record it because there's a town planning board meeting that I want to go to in person. Um, and then uh, tomorrow. Sh uh, Harris is doing not only The View live, but she's also going to be on the Howard Stern radio show. Um, so I want to hear that. I love what she's doing. I love these um, uh, the sort of podcast and influencer um, sort of campaign that she's running because she's hitting all sorts of specific demographics that are tuning into these um, influencers or, or podcast. I know Amy Lisa Farfarla Griffin is talking about how Trump is doing the same thing, but his group are, is all sort of an overlap, right? Those those people, it's the sort of the Joe Rogan um, audience, and but they're all just sort of a subset of the same thing. She's going out to, um, uh, the, you know, places, uh, podcasts and influencers that have different demographic um, uh, uh, listeners and, and followers. So, um, hers, I think is smarter and she's reaching people that aren't going to look at any traditional media, um, which I think is, is, is fantastic. And the fact that she's issuing, you know, traditional corporate media altogether, mostly, I mean, 60 minutes is it's kind of like, a you know, you can't get much more staunch than that. Um, but she's she is avoiding things like the New York Times and the Washington Post because fuck you. Um, you guys have not reported fairly about any of this for the last decade. So um, it, it, I, I like what, what she's been doing. I don't know where um, Amy Lissa Farfarla Griffin says, I wish she was doing this two months ago. This has been what she's been doing since the convention. At the convention, she had influencers. Um, so, and she only became the nominee just before the convention. So it was like, come on. Um, anyway, uh, again, it's a, that, sort of that double standard of, uh, it, you know, she's not doing enough, but then when she's doing double time, it's it's still not enough. Um, and then there was, I saw a complaint, uh, you know, she has spent a third of her time in Washington. She's still the vice fucking president of the United States. She's still got work to do. Um, and probably that's more time than Trump ever spent in Washington when he was the president. Um, he was always golfing in, in in New Jersey or Florida. Fuck that. I just, I, ugh. Ugh. It's so frustrating. And I don't know why they brought up the Sarah Huckabee Sanders thing about um, children keeping you humble. Um, oh, I know why. It, because it was on the podcast, it was this question on the podcast, um, call me daddy that that uh that harris did and i i wish i didn't i didn't listen to the podcast but i i wish i could have heard the rest of the answer because um i loved that uh her initial response is that there's a huge amount of people that aren't aspiring to be humble and i love that I a lot of women that are that are not aspiring to be humble and i love that answer because that sunny is right and and i think the other one um Sarah Haynes, that no one ever talks about Trump's humility because he doesn't have any. Um, and his his speeches are getting weirder. His uh, delivery is getting more kind of demonic. Did you see Elon Musk jumping around the stage behind him? Like a fucking, you know, I want to say teenager, but more like a toddler. Weirdo. That's just, the whole thing's bizarre. Um so anyway, I uh, I'm, 
kind of having trouble processing that this is where we are and we've still got about a month to go, which means it's just going to get worse. Um, but uh, a big week of, of of interviews and information ahead. So let's, oh, and Tim Walls is going to be on Jimmy Kimmel. So there's a lot to pay attention to here at the beginning of October.